Because the number one issue that most people face when they blend in with everyone else is they get no attention. No one wants to consume their content. No one wants to listen to what they have to say because you look like everyone else. And when someone's scrolling their feed and they see a style of video that has those captions, they're like, oh, not this again. I don't even want to watch it. This is my first time ever doing a whiteboard style video. I have one, two, three, four, five, eight different markers. We're gonna go with, chuck the other ones away. Welcome to the video. We're gonna discuss the problem with Alex Hermosi captions. Where does this term even come from? How did it even start? Ryan McGinn was the originator of this style of captions. Ryan McGinn also worked with Ryan Pineda, Grant Cardone, and Alex Hermosi to make these style of captions. It's funny because Ryan and I actually got connected on TikTok when I made a video talking about the exact style of font that is used within those style of captions. And before anyone tries to DM you saying, I can make Hermosi style captions for you, it came from Ryan McGinn, he started it. There are a couple problems with Hermosi style captions that I wanna get into that are important, especially if you are trying to grow on social media and why it could be hurting you. I feel like we need to move this over. I don't. Before we get into what the actual problems are, let's talk about why these captions worked then and why they're not working so much now. Whenever something is brand new, whenever something is new to a marketplace, whenever something is new to social media, it gets a lot of attention because it's different. It catches your eye, it makes you wanna watch because that's just something you've never seen before. I feel like I need to take a wider stance because me standing tall is cutting myself off. That's not the only thing. The reason they worked was because the message that was tied with whatever Alex was saying only amplified it and it helped bring it to life. The captions were just a great way to keep your attention a little bit longer. Now, everyone's using Hormozy style captions. I've even used this within my content, within some of my clients' videos, but that's also another massive issue is now everyone else starts to look the same. Whenever something has a style deemed to it, it's already saturated. You're already late to it. Or Mosey style captions, or Mr. Beast thumbnails. The reason now they can still work is if you have a good message. If the actual content coming from within you that is in the video, that is being portrayed to the audience, that needs to be the best. The captions helps amplify that message, which we're gonna talk about here with the ice cream and sprinkles method, which is the most important. I want you to think of your content as ice cream, frozen yogurt, gelato. On its own, it's great. You don't need any toppings with it. You can eat it right out of the bucket, right out of the pint. When you put toppings on it, it amplifies it. But when you put toppings on ice cream and gelato that tastes like shit, it's still going to taste like shit. It's not gonna help it. It's the same thing with your content. Your content on its own needs to be good. And when you add a trending audio, a trending sound, you add captions to it, you add hashtags to it, all these other little toppings, it can help it. But on its own, the content, the ice cream, this part right here needs to be good on its own. Most people focus on the sprinkles, the toppings of it. What color captions am I gonna use? What font am I gonna use? What trending audio am I gonna use? How many hashtags should I use? But the content itself, this, is not good. This needs to be solid. Your ice cream needs to be the best ice cream possible that when you add the toppings, when you add the sprinkles to it, it only amplifies it. Finally, let's come down here to the purple cow. Seth Godin wrote a wonderful book on marketing and essentially the premise is to stand out in the marketplace. When you think of a purple cow, it's something that stands out to you. It's something that's different. Same thing with social media. What are the purple cows on social media? What are the pieces of content that stand out to you? Who are the people that stand out to you? Or are you blending in with everyone else and looking the exact same? Because the reason why they worked then is because it was brand new. It stood out. Now, the reason everyone is struggling is because they all look the same. What I encourage you from the purple cow here is to find your style. If that's a different style of font, if that's a different style of captions, if that's a different style of presenting content, you don't only have to do Hormozy style content because guess what? You're not Alex. You will never be Alex. That's him. That's what works for him. And oh, by the way, now, if you look at his content, he's changing. His content is changing so it's more branded with his $100 million leads book. Because the number one issue that most people face when they blend in with everyone else is they get no attention. No one wants to consume their content. No one wants to listen to what they have to say because you look like everyone else. And when someone's scrolling their feed and they see a style of video that has those captions, they're like, oh, not this again. I don't even wanna watch it even if the content is good, because you look exactly like everyone else and you're not standing out. Find a style in which you wanna communicate, but make sure that the content within your videos are the best possible pieces of content you can create 
And that comes from being aligned with your content. That comes from being so in tune with your content that the messaging is crystal clear. And then everything else right here that you wanna add, that just helps it. If you really wanna stand out on social media, you have to stop trying to do what everyone else is doing because your buddy did it, because your friend did it, because Alex is doing it, because Enrico's doing it, because Grant Cardone's doing it, because Gary Vee's doing it. People don't want another version of someone else. They want you. You have to put yourself in the mindset of, how can I become a purple cow to separate myself from everyone else so I can actually stand out and start getting some attention. I hope you enjoyed this first whiteboard style video. If you want more content like this, number one, make sure to subscribe because I wanna help you build your content machine. I wanna make social media so simple for you and I want you to become a fucking shark on the internet. With that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.